Hi, and welcome to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Meddahl, reminding you, you can follow us on Twitter at LockdownWBB, or go ahead and make us your first listen every day. Subscribe wherever you get podcasts. We are six days a week now. We're five days every weekday, and on Saturday, we're talking the future WNBA draft. Sarah's name comes up quite a bit. We'll get into that in a moment. Make sure you're following all the work we're doing over at the next, the next hoops.com. We have over a hundred reported pieces on women's basketball every month. We cover it with the fierce urgency required. There's a lot of coverage of Sarah there as well. So let's get right into it because Sarah Andrews of Baylor joins us. Uh, I am I, I don't think it's too much of an overstatement to say obsessed with your game, watching the way it develops over Thank this you. period of time. And so I just want to start by saying this. You talked about, and it's the pinned post on your Twitter account about the fact that you look at people, and I want to get it Jack. The more I'm doubted, the more I like my chances. My question is, on the heels of the year you just had, with the way you show out, do you find that you're getting doubted as much as you used to, or do you feel like that has begun to shift for people understanding what kind of game you bring? I mean, you know, you always have something to prove. Everybody always has their opinion. You know, in my eyes, I still got things I need to get better at. So whatever anybody says, I'm not really worried about anything anybody posts on Twitter or social media or what other people say. Cause I know the work I put in each and every day behind closed doors. And I'm just trying to prepare the team for it every day for practice and, you know, each game. So we go day by day. Your game is one. And we talked about it theoretically at the start of last year about the fact that your game was built for the way that Nikki Collin was looking to play. And now the proof is in the pudding. I just want to throw out some stats so our, our listeners understand the fact that you shot 39% from three last year comparable to what you shot in your freshman year the difference being it was four and a half three-point attempts per game so you more than doubled your volume and the fact that you were able to actually hold in fact increase a little bit your efficiency while you did it is a very big deal just take me through the specifics of how much better you feel like your shooting got even if the numbers are about the same just by the fact that you were able to not only find spots on the floor but be able to do it consistently uh, you know, I think a lot of that came with confidence. I think Coach Nikki instilled so much confidence in me. You know, uh, she was like, you can shoot, shoot the ball. Don't be afraid to take open shots. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it is the right shot for the team. So the team also finding me in the right spots for me to be able to knock those shots down. But it also came to me getting in the gym, getting in better shape. I was able to hit those shots down the stretch, like, you know, when I'm tired and stuff versus when I wasn't in as best of shape, I couldn't hit those type of shots. So I think it had to do with a lot of confidence building and getting in the gym. So you talked about being in the gym and that seems to manifest itself in another way, which is your ability to finish at the rim uh, and your efficiency went up significantly there. You're also getting to the rim a lot more. I, I wonder if there was a moment that you felt early on last season, that difference where you're saying, you know, wow, I was able to get to my spot in a different way than I was my freshman year. Uh, you know, I think at the beginning of last year, I wasn't finished as like finishing as well as I could. And I think Coach Tony got me in the gym and I think it started to click like maybe against like Texas Tech or a few games before. I don't really remember, but like I started to see the difference. Like I was finishing all type of ways and I was starting to say like, hey, I'm getting it. Like I'm getting the hang of it. And I think that's where the confidence just shot up. Like I can get to any spot on the floor and score the ball. You're playmaking was something that was a calling card coming in to your college career. And that was significant last year. I mean, you played over 1,100 minutes last year. Turnover rate went down a ton and your assist percentage is up to 25%. So when you think about your role as a distributor, is that foremost in your mind? Is foremost scoring, you know, how do you kind of balance those priorities, even just possession by possession? I mean, I think, you know, being a point guard, you're like that little coach on the floor and you have to know where people on the floor are best at. So that means I have to know where Asian is the best at to score the ball or where Erica or where Kate's best that I know my teammates and I know the situation to put them in for them to be successful. So I'm kind of a get my teammates involved first and score necessarily when I have to. I know the difference of scoring when I have to and getting other people involved, but I like to get other people involved because I just like seeing other people have success. 
what is the biggest thing we haven't seen out of your game since we last saw you in the NCAA tournament? What's kind of the leveling up that you've done over the course of this offseason work? I think, you know, the defensive end, I think I'm a better defender than what I show. I can dominate the game on both ends of the floor, but I think by allowing myself to become a more impact on defense, it'll change the game tremendously. It'll allow us to get out and transition more. So I think you'll see the shift in my defense this year. How much more does this feel like a team that's built to play the way Nikki plays? You know, obviously there was a huge transition a year ago and you're at a point now where a couple of classes in and, um, you know, I just wonder if you can feel a difference, you know, as that turnover has continued here on the roster. Uh, you know, I think, you know, we were good last year, her being her first year and our first year with her. I mean, I think, you know, we were good as we added new pieces. We have added some pieces that like are her style of play, the players that she's recruited. So I think it has allowed her to fill in positions that, you know, we didn't necessarily have last year. We were shorthanded with players. So I think she's added players to the roster that fits our culture, our culture. We play with joy. We play with fun. And I think it's just an excited team that loves the game. And I think most of all, the people she bring in is like, we want us to feel like home away from home at the end of the day for everybody that's not close to home. Like Dallas is in my backyard from Baylor. So I think men necessarily, she brought in a lot of people that she just like loves the game and just want to win. The specifics of the players, a lot of them come with a pedigree. You know, Drayuna Edwards is, is a great example of somebody who hit on absolutely incredible shot to take down South Carolina. You, you know, you, you see, you know, Blackwell coming from Missouri doing the same thing, having hit, I, you know, I don't mean to pick on South Carolina, but a big shot to be South Carolina <laughs> as well. And, yes. and they didn't lose all that much last year, South Carolina. So I guess that's something significant, but I just wonder, you know, does, is the sound in the locker room different as you have, you know, players coming in to be talking about, you know, things they've done elsewhere as well. I mean, you know, I think they bring in that experience. Uh, you know, we're kind of not a young team, but we're a new team. But mm -hmm. it's certainly a new team. They've been there before. They know what it takes to hit the game when it's shot. They know what it's like to be in a tight game. So I think they bring in a lot of experience for us that we're going to need down the stretch for some of our younger kids. This is a team that had a disappointment at the end of what was an epic year. And I, I'm a big believer that uh, there is too much focus on defining a year based on whatever the last name was rather than the totality of it. And what you guys did as a success story, I think, should not be underestimated. But I know that had to have been hard to experience. And I guess I wonder how you, somebody who, frankly, has not lost very much at all throughout your entire career, how do you process that? How did you process what happened against South Dakota State and and um, and put you, excuse me, South Dakota, and put you in a position uh, to utilize it? Is it fuel? Is it something that you put aside? What do you do? How do you use it? Uh, I mean, necessarily, I wouldn't call it a disappointment. Honestly, I would call it a learning experience and a way for us to grow. I mean, right after that game, you know, I was thinking about how can I be better for next year? What did I do wrong? And, you know, that's a game that I replay frequently in my head of like, when I'm in the gym, I might practice, oh, I should have got this rebound or, oh, I should have made this shot. So I think with that game, I took it as a learning experience and it's fuel for next year. Like, I was ready for the season to start again tomorrow. But also, they were a really good team overall. I think they showed that in the tournament, they like they could have possibly beat anybody on any given night. And I think that's what it showed. And that's what March Madness is all about is on that night who's hot. So I would say they were a good team. But I think it was a learning experience for me. That team was underseeded. There's no question about that. That was that was well. That that's a different discussion for a different time. But so so here we are looking at this season coming up, and uh, you guys have not shied away from playing a difficult early season schedule. And I just I'm wondering when you look at that early season slate, do you have game or games circled where you're saying you know this is going to be a real measuring stick for us, a real measuring stick for me as you looked uh, looked ahead to what's coming? Uh, honestly, I got every game circled because every game, you know, we got to win. So I think every game I have circled because like it, it goes on a win and loss record and you know we take every opponent serious no matter who it is, no matter what it is because any given day, somebody can be beat and we can be beat. So I think, you know, I take every game with the same approach because at the end of the day, it's a basketball game and I care about the win and not the loss. 
Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every tip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. For debt boring rental cars, find your drive at Turo.com. I do want to point out for our listeners, in particular, that game you have coming up against Maryland, uh, the Terrapins coming into town on November 20th, 2 p.m. Central. That's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, I find Baylor to be a must watch generally, but I think it's worth pointing that out. The other one, obviously, seeing Arizona coming to Dallas uh, for you guys to play on December the 18th is going to be really interesting to me as well. But just just for you as and and the reason I wanted to have you back uh, on, on this podcast and why I enjoy talking to you so much is you are a student of the game. And so you talked about the work that you do. Uh, putting the time in in the gym. But I know you have your sights set on the WNBA. I know it's a matter of time till I cover you in that league as well. And I wanted to know, take me through just what that experience was watching the WNBA this season, what stuck out to you, and if there was anything that you took from the season that we just saw at the professional level here. Uh, I think I took a lot from it. You know, having the resources that I have, I'm very fortunate for it. I know the Odyssey Sims, the List Smith, the Queens. I know so many of them. So being able to reach out to them, you know, pick their brain is an awesome thing to be able to do. Like, hey, in the league, how do y'all handle this? Like, if I'm dealing with a confidence problem or I'm missing shots, like, I can reach out to them and see. But also, you know, there's not a lot of spots. And, you know, you got to you gotta do your job each and every day because every day is not promised in the league. So I think I look at that and I'm like, there's no days I can take off. Like, no matter who it is, you got to go at them. And, you know, that's just somewhere I want to be at the end of the day. So I think Coach Nikki can get me there because she's been in the position. She's been the coach. She's been in that league. So I, she can get me to where I want to be at the end of the day. That's why I'm here. But being able to pick the people in the league's brains, like, is a blessing. When you see Liz having the success she has, and for our listeners, I, I assume you know this, but uh, the connection that Sarah Andrews and Alyssa Smith had last year uh, was significant. And, uh, you know, does it make it realer for you, you know, to see somebody, you were on the court with her a few weeks later, there she is on the WNBA court too? I mean, like, you know, it's mind blowing. But it's amazing because, like you said, the connection we have, that's my best friend. And I, I talk to her every day. I can pick up the phone and call her. But I just love watching her compete because she's a fun player. You know, when I came to Baylor, she was somebody I was highly excited to play with just because of the energy she brings. And she's going to compete every night. And she wants the ball. She wants to win. But most of all, she helped me grow as a player in general. So I think, you know, like seeing her on TV, sometimes I'm just like, wow, like, I know her and I've seen her in the gym on the late nights, the early mornings. I've seen the frustration and the work ethic. So it's crazy. Do you visualize? Are you somebody who will let yourself sort of close your eyes and think about it? Is that something that helps you get to the goals? And I'm just curious if so, if you let yourself visualize what your moment getting to that W is like. And even if your moments this year, if you let yourself think about that. Oh, uh, you know, I think this year, I've thought about this year a lot. Like at, last year, you know, I showed everybody, you know, I could play, but I know I got so much more to prove. So I vision myself hitting that game, winning shot, you know, winning a championship. I vision myself in so many different things and I vision the league too, but I also vision, hey, you have a fifth year, you're able to come back and play another year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have so many things that I'm worried about and like thinking about, but right now I'm just focused on this year and, you know, the league will be there at the end of college, but I'm picking between, do you want to take that fifth year or do you want to go to the league, you know? And how how are you feeling about that? I mean, I, I know that's a difficult decision to make. You know, um, if you've come to a decision, that's one thing, but if not, you know, who are you leaning on and how are you having those conversations? Because I know that's going to be a challenge. I mean, you know, I've talked to Coach about it because she she was in the league, but I mean, I think about, you know, who can say that they can get a master's for free, you know? It's only once in a lifetime you get to be in college and 
you get to get paid to play basketball in college and with the NIL opportunities, you know, I think it's changed the game in college. So I look at the opportunities on that side and the league, like, yeah, I want to get there. But like I said, it'll be there. But I can't always say I could be a college student again. Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every potential new hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. I'm a small business owner. I know it well. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified job candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. I know for us over at The Next, it is so important, not just that you find somebody who is able to do the work, but somebody who fits in to the culture that we are building at thenexthoops.com. So I know it all too well. So you go ahead, add your job, and then the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's linkedin.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen today. Now make your second listen Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. It's very easy to think about the future, too, but something that I know and respect about you is that you don't ignore where you've come from. And so I just want to talk about the experience you had back in August playing uh, as a coach with Pass the Ball and the fact that you were able to uh, mentor young players who are coming up uh, through the what is enlarging funnel in women's basketball. We're more and more getting the opportunity to play and more and more mentored by people like you. Take me through what that experience was like and why that's so important to you. I mean, you know, it's amazing because at the end of the day, I love giving back to the community, but I also know I was in their shoes one day when I was looking up to somebody that was in college or I just wanted a hello or just some advice for somebody that was a role model to me. So it's like genuine love. Like I love talking to kids. I love interacting with kids because I know I was once them and I know how it made me feel. Maybe if my role model didn't say anything to me or they ignored me or you know, just it could be life changing. You could be the reason why somebody falls back in love again. And you could be the reason somebody, you know, goes here. Like it's so much that you could do and impact somebody's life without even knowing it. That's just the po- most that's just the part I enjoy most about it. It, it. It's it's delightful to see it's extending the ladder down. And and you're right. I mean, it's so important. And it's great to see somebody of your stature doing it as well. So bottom line, when you think about how are you measuring success this year? How are you doing it? What are what what do you do you have stats you're looking for? Do you have a, a feeling you're looking for? Is there a spot in the NCAA tournament you get to that you're looking for? Have you know what what's success for Sarah Andrews? Success for Sarah Andrews is leading his team to, to success. Mm-hmm. If I can genuinely say at the end of the day, after every game, I gave it all I got and I made my teammates better, I did my job. Mm-hmm. You know, I might have zero points or whatever. I might have set the bitch for 30 minutes. Who knows? But if I impacted the game in a way and made my teammates better, no matter if we get the win or we get the loss, I mean, I mean, we want to win. But if I can genuinely say I made them a better player on and off the court, whatever it is, that's a win for me. And the number one teammate of yours who isn't getting enough attention would be who? I would say Bickle probably doesn't get – enough credit as she should you know there's things that don't show up in the stat book that she does there she's the reason I might get a wide open layup because she she blew somebody up on the screen or I might get a three behind the arc because of the screen she she set so I think she doesn't get enough attention as she should because she does the little things that does not show up in the stat book but the player you need on the team 
That is Caitlin Bickle, of course, and we will continue to make sure that we cover her over at the next. And uh, we'll we'll have her on the podcast too. Then we'll we'll, we'll take your advice. Well, Sarah thank Andrews, it is delightful to chat with you. Uh, on behalf of all our listeners, want to thank you for being part of Locked On Women's Basketball. To our listeners, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you stay tuned tomorrow and every day. Uh, I am Howard Megdal, wishing you a wonderful day.